All right, welcome in. We have our last project. This is going to be part one of the video. And we started off as usual with our first and last name. Now, if you haven't already done so, pull up the instructions on your side. Let's go ahead and just write our student ID just so we have it. I'll use the typical one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, and let's go ahead, part A as usual, right? So we'll say part 1A. A is going to be equal to the last digit, I believe. Let's see. A is the last digit. B is the second to last digit. And C is the third to last digit. And of course, D is just going to be the sum right of or actually we don't need some we can just do a plus b plus c awesome so that is part 1a that is it i'm going to go up to part 1d so now let's look at part 1b and let's read the instruction so it says write clear variables so let's go ahead and do that uh, actually what we need to do is actually clear out x any x's and y's in case Right, we run this multiple times, so we'll say clear x, y to begin this exercise and then proceed with the following problem. Consider the following two-dimensional vector field. Plot this vector field in MATLAB over negative 6 to positive 6 for x and the same for y, with both with a step size of 1. So the first thing we need to do is create what's called a mesh grid. And so we'll create x, comma, y for our mesh grid. And I mean x, comma, y. And we're going to set that equal to a mesh grid. And for our mesh grid, we need to define, we're going from negative six with a step size of one for our, our x and the same thing for our y. Awesome. Now we need to define both the x component and the y component here in order to graph the vector field. So we'll say x is equal to a plus two times y. And y is going to be equal to, it looks like it's going to be a little bit more complicated. We have b plus 1 times sine of one more parenthesis, one more parenthesis, c plus 1 divided by 2, step outside one more time, times x. We'll put a semicolon. And this is going to be figure 1. And we need to run quiver, and it's only regular quiver, not quiver three. This is just two-dimensional space of x comma y for our mesh grid with the actual components capital X, capital Y. Control save. Oh, uh, yeah, this is fine. We'll just call Ragsdale. I'll overwrite this, and we're going to run it. Awesome, so you should have something that looks as such. And moving on to part 1c. Let's read the instructions. So it says, using the same vector field as above, which we've already put in, use MATLAB to calculate the curl of f and divergence of f and call these p1cc and p1cd. Easy enough. Right, so let's go ahead and define some symbolic variables. Sims x and y. We need to define f here equals an actual vector now and matter of fact we can just go copy and paste what we have above control copy control v comma i believe let's make sure that's a comma and we'll go copy the other thing here uh, we actually need more right control copy Control V. We've created our vector for our vector field. Right, and now let's read this one more time. To find our curl in two dimensions, right, this is what we talked about with Green's theorem. Right, so to find our vector or to find our curl in two dimensions, it's just going to be q sub x minus p sub y. Right, or in other words, it's so p1cc here is equal to, uh, we're going to say, the derivative 
of our second component, which we call Q, with respect to X, and we subtract out the derivative of our first component, right, with respect to Y, right? So that is the curl in two dimensions. If you wanted to actually calculate fully the curl, right, your third dimension here would be zero. There's no Z, so the partial derivative with respect to Z would be zeros all the way around, and this is what you would end up with, right, which is what we mentioned in Green's theorem. So that is our uh, curl. Now we need to do our divergence, which we call P1CD, which is just equal to the divergence of F, and we have both X and Y here. And let's just let both of these output so we can actually see an answer. So control save, we will run. Let's see what happens here. We get figure one, and I believe everything shows up with zeros. I think that is normal. Nope, oh, P1CD is zero. P1CC, okay, good. So we will leave it as such. Uh, let me check one thing here. Yeah. We have the P1CC, the curl, minus, good. Let me check one more thing here. All right, so that looks good for part 1C. Well, let's keep it moving. And the last part that I promised we would cover, part 1D. Maybe I'll go over part 1E as well. So let's see. Um, part 1D, let's see be an oriented curve that is a line segment in two space from A1, B1, uh, A plus 1, B plus 1 to A plus 3, B plus 3. Using the same vector field as above, so that's already defined, right? Use MATLAB to calculate the line integral below using the first method discussed in this project, which is the parameterization method, right? So first we need to, if we're going to parameterize, we need our parameterized variable. So sims t, right? And what we're gonna end up doing is creating the same f that we just had there, but we need these components. And so we can just essentially copy our code here. Okay. And now I'm not gonna do this here. You're welcome to do it on paper. I'm gonna tell you the parameterization, right? It's if we create a line segment here. So we can say rx, of t, right, is our parameterization with respect to, right, of x with in t. So this is equal to a plus one plus two times t. And again, this is just from the line segment. You're welcome to do this on the side. R of y of t is going to be the same exact thing, but b plus one plus two times t. And now let's read the rest, right? We want to use, we want to calculate the integral here, right? The parameterized integral. So in this case, we'll call it F underscore int because we're going to end up using VPA afterwards, just in case of rounding errors. So F underscore int is going to be equal to int of F of R X comma r y, right? So this is the parameterized version of our vector field, right? Let's make sure I'm doing everything else right. We need to step outside one times the derivative of our vector r x r y, which is a column vector. That's how we have to perform this dot product that's about to happen here with respect to t. Right, and now we're going, uh, so the derivative, let's clarify, this derivative is with respect to t, we're also integrating with respect to t, do we need a comma? We do, with respect to uh, t between zero and one. There we go, that looks right. And again, we're gonna run, we're gonna call it p1d now, just so we can vpa f int.
And again, we can output this. So we'll control save, we'll run it to make sure there's no issues with our code. Everything looks good, P1D looks good. Uh, and I guess we can do one last part, right? There's actually one line of code for P1E. So let's go ahead, we'll do it. This is actually utilizing Green's theorem. So utilizing Green's theorem, right, let's read this. P1D says, let C be a closed curve oriented counterclockwise that is a rectangle in two dimensions with the vertices 0, 0, C plus 2, 0, etc. in the XY plane. Using the same vector field from above, use the MATLAB to calculate the line integral below with Green's theorem. Okay, now you'll notice that we already did part of this, which was Q sub X minus P sub Y back in part 1C, which is P1CC. So we already have most of this done. So our answer for P1E is going to be, and we'll just VPA it now, right? Green's theorem says we're going to use a double integral. And we're going to get P1CC, right? Which we said was the curl. We're going to integrate with respect to x, all between zero and c plus two. And then we're also going to integrate with respect to y, or since we're over a rectangle, between zero and d plus one. And we can control save that. So literally just one line of code for part one e. Let's go ahead and run it. And we are good. So what we're looking at, right, we still have our figure one, and we can run Green's theorem. Again, these two answers should be different. One's over this rectangle, right? The other one's a different problem for part 1D. So hopefully this helped. I'm really just leaving you guys with F and G. Uh, F looks like it's a similar format of getting a mesh grid going, except you're gonna get any quiver three. And G will leave for you as a mystery. I will post part two probably on Sunday. All right, that is all that I got for you guys. I keep try to keep it short and quick. So let me know if you have any questions. Everyone have a good weekend.